we're back in studio for our episode seven, eight. I don't know anymore. They start to run together. I hear you. Our first uh, spring episode. I am your host, Cody Kelly, joined by my co-host, uh, Scott Brown. Yeah, we are in the midst of March Madness, and I don't think it's just basketball. Quite a bit of March Madness going on. Yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting for us because we're just trying to find time to record now with baseball season on us. There's a little more time at basketball season now. It's pressing. Yeah, I know. Now that we're coaching the sport, this gets a little tougher. Let's jump into the Riverbend Roundup. It was a busy week for Riverbend. Yeah, the volleyball girls uh, spent this week in game mode. They had four games. They spent three on the road and had a home game this week. They went to Union, Sullivan, and St. James. And they had a home match against Owensville. The seventh grade turned in a two and two week. Um, Coach Brown believes it was a long week, but it was nice to get in the win column. And she sees some good things going forward for the rest of the season. The eighth grade under Coach Carrico had a really nice week. They went three and one. She was su super pleased with this athletic group of girls. Fun to watch. The team was led in high total kills for the week by Alana Reeder. So the girls' volleyball is trending up now. Yeah, and then track also started this Monday with every other spring sport. Coach Melanie Missy and Coach Angie O'Neill have taken over the middle school track program. They've officially moved pra track practice to the high school now. They've got 56 athletes currently on the team. That's quite a bit. And their first meet is after spring break. And then as we go up to 425 Indian Warpath, varsity girls basketball wrapped up their season last Saturday with a 45-28 loss to the defending Class 3 state champions, Lift for Life Academy. Their record on the year was 9-16, and 16, Coach Missy's first year that saw a vast improvement from last year's record. Everyone is back next year, and Coach Missy will have even longer to establish her tempo, style of basketball, and work on some skills this summer. Yeah, the girls um, showed a lot of promise the last third of the year, I thought, and Big things, big things coming. Yeah, they finally started to learn how to win. Now we get to take it into next year with that same group. It should be fun. On the boys' basketball side, the Indians finished their year with a 47-43 loss to Lutheran South and Districts. Quinn Blackburn led the way with 27 points. I believe he had 11 boards as well for another double-double. Indians finished the year 8-19, headed the offseason with lots of goals, and I'm sure their June will be busy, busy, busy. Yeah, the, uh, the boys were young. Um, they'll have some senior leadership next year again. I think um, a couple of their leading scorers come back and a, a big summer ahead for them as well. They've got, they've got some work to do. Now, I'm going to let you talk about our little dynasty here next. Yes, the dynasty. It finally concluded with a co big conference meet for the speech team. Um, they competed at Pacific High School this week, and the much-expected speech team became Four Rivers Conference champions for the 15th year in a row. Ed Kapler's program just continues to dominate. Um, at the conference meet, the PHS speech team won eight of the 11 individual events. And congratulations to these eight conference champions. Riley Cook, champion for dramatic interpretation. Madison Lewis for prose reading. Caden Shecker, Original Oratory, Ellie Nam and Riley Cook for Duo Interpretation, Ellie Nam and Madison Lewis for Duet Acting, Julie Patton, Radio Speaking, Ava Dusinger, Poetry Reading, Lila Lloyd, Storytelling. Those were the eight um, individual champions at the meet. The following Pacific students also received conference medals. Drew Raymer, second in extemporaneous speaking, Bella Gensler, second place in poetry reading. Alex Harris, third place in extempor extemporaneous speaking. Drew Raymer, third in original oratory. Caleb Kansian, third place in radio speaking. And Malaya Gertis, third place in dramatic interpretation. Great job, speech team. Yeah, that's uh, 15 years that the conference championship has been handed out for speech, and all 15 of them reside at Pacific High School. Yeah, you, you can't say anything else but dynasty. Yep, you go into that and think in second place if you're someone else. <laughs> exactly. Uh, then on to the dance team. They finished up their regular season, I guess season as a whole, yeah. with the state competition. They finished second in the mixed performance and fourth in hip-hop at the state competition. So congratulations to them. 
And then on to the track, soccer, and baseball for the spring season. Track season, uh, the track team's led by kind of a whole brand new coaching staff. Uh, coach Mandersky takes over as the head coach. Coach Hillhouse is back in as an assistant. He's been there before. And Coach Alexis King is new and joins the staff and will lead them into the spring. On the soccer side of things, Coach Dana Kelm is back as the varsity head coach for the girls. Joined with the new assistant, Steve Smith, who was the varsity boys head coach, who they will be on the program here in a few weeks. I believe we were trying to get that penciled down. They're finishing up tryouts this week. Yeah, that that group has some talent. I know they could score a little bit last year. Uh, they were young last year, but throughout our practice and me out on the track with the baseball kids, I just peeked over a little bit at the soccer team, and, and there's some skill. Yeah, and speaking of baseball, we had 36 kids try out this year for the team. Uh, we should have enough for three teams, and I'm saying we because we coach it. Varsity opens up the or the season opener March 18th at Sullivan in the first ever Four Rivers Conference preseason tournament. We got rid of the old Four Rivers Conference classic they had forever, and now it's just eight teams, all conference teams. Yeah, it was it was time that that tournament had run its course, and I, I know Coach Reed's excited for this group to get into game play, and uh, we don't have much time left. No, once again, we talked about young programs on the girls' side, and soccer still, I think, is fairly young this year, and baseball is going to be young, too, with mostly led by all juniors and just two seniors on the roster. Yeah, if you want to get out and watch some, some kids play in the spring, the baseball group, the soccer group, the kids on the track team, uh, go out and enjoy the weather, and I think uh, you will not be disappointed. And this week is normally right now we would turn to our student correspondent, Charlie's Corner, but... Charlie's been preoccupied with track practice, and which I we completely understand. So we have nothing for Charlie's corner this week. We will hopefully have him back next week with maybe some interviews from from the track side of things. Yeah, for sure. Uh, before we get into our interview this week, as we were joined with uh, Katina Armstrong, the director of communications for Merrimack Valley, to discuss the St. Patrick's Day parade coming up, and Blair Thompson, our athletic director, just to talk. A little bit anything Indians athletics. Let's go to everybody's favorite segment of the week. Performance of the week. I'm going to jump in this time. I'm going to beat you to it, Mr. Kelly. I know which one he's taking. Yeah, I, I got to jump on this speech team. Ed Kapler, we're trying to come up with a, a good comparison for this guy. We're And we're going to go with the John Wooden of the speech circuit. I'm telling you, this guy, all he does is win. He could probably write a book. Uh, we've had him on. He's a super interview. And it's just it's just perfect that he has these wonderful, talented kids that are passionate, that love what they're doing, and they get it done. 15 years in a row, um, dominating the Four Rivers. They cleaned up again. You can't say enough about what they've done and the work they've put in and how proud they've made their school and their family. So I'm picking the speech team. Oh, well, you gave me mine then. I am I was going dance team, coached by Tanya Barnes. Uh, fantastic group this year. They've per perfected their art, years of dance lessons, hard work, sweat and tears, tons of practice. Shout out to this group who does a lot at PHS behind the scenes. Congrats again to their second place in the mix competition at state and fourth place in the hip hop competition. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed at the basketball games watching them perform and their energy level is high and you could tell it requires some talent to be on the dance team. Yeah, that's a very, very tough sport to do. So now, as you kind of notice, our show might be a little bit quicker this week because we're kind of in the middle of changing over to different seasons so we don't have a lot to report on. So as we wrap up this week, though, don't go anywhere because we've got two interviews for you. And next week, we have the baseball roundtable, which could be interesting with all four baseball coaches in and Coach Hart Hillhouse will be in charge of that interview. Wow. But don't go anywhere. We will be right back with Katina Armstrong. And we're back in studio, joined with Dr. Katina Armstrong to discuss the upcoming St. Patrick's Day parade with us. It's still hard for me to say doctor. I'm still getting used to it because I said Mrs. Armstrong for all of fifth grade whenever I had you as a teacher. Um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. 
So if you would like to tell everybody just a little bit, though, too, about what you do for the district, I guess, before we jump into the partnership, because you are a Merrimack Valley employee. Yes. So one of the best parts of my position as director of communications is to partner with community organizations to get our students and staff involved in the community. So one, I'm on the Pacific Partnership Board, and two, I'm on the Pacific Area Chamber of Commerce Board, which lends to lots of opportunities for our students and staff. Which is also part of the reason that you're in today. We have the upcoming St. Patrick's Day Parade that we wanted to get a little exposure for. When is that parade and where is the parade taking place? Yes. So the parade is Saturday, March 12th. It will begin at 10 a.m. Line up will be at the Pacific Intermediate uh, parking lot and Doris Hoffman parking lot. Parade lineup will begin at 9 a.m. And then the parade again starts at 10 and heads down West Union, down 1st Street, St. Louis Street, and then back around. And there will be candy because I've been to this parade before. So if you want to bring your kids out, there will be plenty of candy to be had for the youngsters. Absolutely. Um, I know our float, our, I guess, we'll have some ATVs that will be driving in the parade, promoting for the school district, um, just opportunities to work for Merrimack Valley, and then our kindergarten registration, and then thanking our family members and citizens for the passage of Prop 1. So we'll be throwing out beads, purple, and of course, green for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I would thank everybody again for the Prop 1. That's helped a lot of things at the school district. Also, if you would like to enter the parade, is it still open that you can sign up? Yes, yes. If you are interested in joining us by having a float or walking in the parade, you can go to pacificmo.org. Again, that's pacificmo.org. And there's a registration link right there on that front page. And you guys also have Facebook, I believe, too, the Pacific Partnership. I saw some people posting about the parade on there. So if anybody needs to see the information again, you can go to Pacific Partnership's Facebook page and check that out. Besides the parade, there are other things, I'm sure, coming up in the future. I don't know if you have any of those. Kind of put you on the spot to see if you had any of those dates. Oh, yes. So um, I can tell you that the Pacific Partnership is working very heavily on our car show so a lot of people might see that on social media right now we will be having a car show again in june uh, we're looking to have it bigger and better than ever we're working on having fireworks we'll have a lot of different activities vendors out at that event so make sure people uh, check us out again at pacificmo.org for all of our events and of course we'll have our summer concerts down at the pacific railroad yeah. The Sunset on the Rails, I believe, is that? Yes, that's correct. Um, before we wrap it up, though, we kind of keep a stat going of Merrimack Valley PHS grads that have been on the show. I think now you make six or seven since we started this. I just think that's kind of a great thing to see how many people want to stay in this community and do things for this community. Yes, I am extremely passionate about Merrimack Valley School District. I graduated from Pacific High School in 1992. Um, love this place. My kids graduated here. My husband graduated here. Uh, I have a grandson who lives in San Antonio right now, but his favorite color is purple. So Noah will be uh, hopefully joining us in a couple years and he'll be an Indian. Yeah, we'll just keep it going. Everybody in the family, all Indians. So before I let you go, this since we have this chance, can we discuss a little bit of Prop 1 just to let the people know what has been done with Prop 1 money? Absolutely. So first, I just want to thank our community for coming out and always supporting uh, the Merrimack Valley School District. It's because of our citizens that we can advance our facilities. Um, our biggest project is the addition of Zitzman Elementary. Uh, people will drive by, they can see it's, it's a massive project. And it, we're using ICF, and that is extremely durable. It is great for energy savings. And it's one of the first projects with ICF for a school in the state of Missouri. So lots of interesting stuff with that project. We also have five playgrounds that complete projects. Those are all completed projects. We have upgraded security camera systems throughout the district. And then we are upgrading our vestibules 
Hopefully we'll have Pacific Intermediate's new entrance. Uh, we will showcase that the first week of March. So it sounds like a lot of things getting done with the Prop 1, which is great to see. Once again, I'd like to thank you for joining me. This was Dr. Katina Armstrong joining me. It's still hard for me to say. I'm going to get used to it eventually. Probably not, but we will try. Thank you again in the parade, March 12th, 10 a.m. If you got the kids, bring them out. Anybody come out. It's always a fun time. Don't go anywhere. I will be joined in the studio next with Athletic Director Blair Thompson. Joined back in studio with our Athletic Director, Blair Thompson. This is a, kind of a nice interview. This is the guy that made this show possible for us. Yeah, glad to finally be on here. And like you said, just an idea that came up. And uh, credit to you, Coach Brown, uh, for really taking off with it. You know, we were able to get some equipment. And, you know, any any idea, a good idea, is just still just an idea until somebody actually does something with it. And you guys have certainly done that. And I think a lot of people have enjoyed what you guys are doing. Well, like I said, it, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you again. Uh, before we dive into just like the athletic directing as a whole, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? I know you're not originally from here, so some people are interested in that background. Yeah, yeah. Been a couple different places. Started out my early earliest days making Missouri. Uh, I had a father who was a basketball coach, um, teacher, and, um, you know, we ended up moving to Jefferson City. Um, you know, I was in middle school, so graduated from there, ended up. Uh, playing some college basketball at the University of Central Missouri, stuck around and coached on uh, Coach Kim Anderson's staff for three years, got into high school coaching once I was done with that, coached for uh, 15, 16 years, up until recently when I you know, decided to take the jump into admin and uh, Pacific provided that opportunity for me and I'm glad for it. Been here ever since. And I can, uh, I'll just go ahead and say, we'll forgive you for being a coach at Sullivan <laughs> for those years. Yeah. I Worked my way those. up 44 finally, huh? Yeah. The rivalry with Sullivan Pacific maybe isn't what it used to be, but back then it was pretty hot. So yeah, we'll, we'll let it slide now. So before we dive in, so we talked about your coaching. Do you think coaching kind of prepared you for this role as an athletic director before yeah. you even took the job? Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. Having been around a bunch of coaches, um, having done it, you know, working my way up first as a graduate assistant, um, and then class three, class four, and then eventually class five for 10 years, you know, the, the responsibilities became greater and greater with each job. Um, you know, I was at Jefferson City right up until I got here. And, you know, you're looking at uh, just a massive amount of um, youth numbers you're talking about and uh, summer schedules and that's kind of what got me onto the admin side of it uh, I, I actually enjoy that kind of stuff trying to schedule things and tournaments shootouts regular season schedules multiple levels um you know and just kind of making things how i saw uh, i thought they should be i was given the freedom to do so and uh, took off with it and you know got to a point where i'm decided to make it make the jump and do it as a job instead of just as part of my job so you know there's other challenges that come with actually being the on the ad side rather than just coaching but um you know those have been some adjustments that i've had to make and challenges that i've had to face head on but it's been uh, i was definitely i had an idea but i think just like a lot of things until you actually do it you know i had an idea in my head of what an ad did and what it was uh but there were a lot of things that um, I've had to experience and just, you know, ask and call on some people. And I've had a lot of great people help me survive the first year and a half, if you will, um, and get through that. Yeah, you picked an uh, interesting time to jump into the athletics with everything that we had going on. Sure. So kind of going into that, what's the one biggest thing you didn't anticipate with this job, non-COVID uh, related? Yeah, well, the obvious one would have been the COVID related stuff but uh, you know that was that was a challenge for everybody not just me and you know that's one thing that uh, I try to keep in perspective is we're all trying to figure that out as, as we went um, but really just the challenges for me coming into a new district um, you know where you really you're trying to figure out how to get your questions answered uh, when you need stuff who to go to 
and you're trying to do all this stuff as you know time well, as fast or in a timely manner as possible and you know that that became difficult with especially with the amount of questions that needed to be answered during the whole covid thing so just learning how the merrimack valley district operated from an activity standpoint you know that's the biggest challenge coming in you know you're trying to meet a bunch of people communicate but at the same time you're having to wear masks and can't get near anybody it became a little bit challenging um but we've you know figured it out and at the same time you're trying to meet just a lot of new people while you're doing that and my other one would be i guess too having uh, andy herp still here our former athletic director that's kind of a rare thing to have the ad still in the building the former one a lot of places so you're able to call on him for some advice here and there too no doubt no doubt as i mentioned earlier a lot of people have been willing to uh, answer some questions and andy's definitely been one of those i've i've wore him out from time to time trying to pick his brain but uh you know in talking about learning how a district works man there's no better advantage than having the old ad who's willing to work with you and still wants to see everything do well run smoothly be successful uh, you know he's in the building and just uh or a phone call away so he's he's been tremendous been more than willing to help with whatever i've brought forward and um you know and i can say that about a lot of people in the district which which speaks very well sometimes it's kind of tough like you said to get to know people when they got masks on you can't talk to everybody <laughs> yeah. your first year here yeah, but just the way it was started to build some new relationships as we get into, we're kind of in the middle of the seasons right now, so I'm sure you guys are busy with entering rosters on Misha, checking the physicals, all that stuff from this week. Yep, just the administrative part of that. And, you know, um, Lauren Quino up in the uh, athletic office does a tremendous job. That's a big part of what she does. Uh, very organized and on top of that, among other things. But uh, coaches, you know, are very busy picking out uh, their rosters and you know, mix and match and putting things in place, getting ready to make the run is, is um, you know, we've gotten lucky here with the weather as well. So um, it's, we're off and running. We're about a weekend and uh, Jamboree's games will start up, inter squad scrimmage, whatever people, whatever coaches have going, uh, will be starting here soon. So looking forward to that little change. Uh, I'm ready to get outside after being stuck inside all winter. I, you know, that's uh, about that time. All right, well, some of you guys may have heard this guy's a very busy person. He's gotten a couple text messages and some phone calls since we've been in here. <laughs> yeah. Everybody is always looking for the athletic director. That is one thing I do know about the job. It, yeah. Whether it was Mr. Herbs now or Mr. Thompson, I usually blow him up a bunch with scheduling games or just random questions. So I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And hopefully we got a good spring sports season starting up here. Yep, we're off and running. Thanks for having me, Cody. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Until next week, everybody, keep up the chatter.